So I'm not too sure why the left is doing this now of all times, but they, and I'm saying Bill Maher, Bill Maher maybe isn't left, but I feel like he's kind of center left, have put together a group of people who've come together, call it kind of the hypocrisy of their own party, of the left, of saying how the recognition of, hey, we're not doing too good with dudes right now, why? And they're even calling it out of, like, we've put too many dudes in the corner and they come out radical radicalized. Uh, it, it just, when I started sitting back and listening to this, I was like, man, I kind of agree with a lot of what they're saying. And I'm definitely pro-Trump. And when I hear this, I think the solutions are definitely on Trump's side, right? Because we've already seen talking points. We could see plans. We also see that there's a group of established people that Trump's going into office with. So it's not just Trump and JD. It's like Trump, JD, Tulsi, Vivek, Elon, RFK. And their, their whole thing is make America healthy again, make America great again, make America safe again, make America wealthy again, make America educated again. Like all of these things are things that I, I subscribe to. But if you subscribe to them, apparently you're a racist and you're a bigot. And that's the left has to fight that because they're creating this stigma, this notion that n right now it's a problem. If they continue to do this per election cycle and they continue to evolve on their campaign marketing approach, it's going to be overly toxic and get to a point where it's just so divisive. And eventually everyone's going to see that they are indeed everything that they claim the other side to be. That explains why Trump is doing so well among young men. Well, we have one, one here. We have one. Think, <laughs> we have one. I think it's a sample size of one for too long. Um, <laughs> for too long, I think the Democratic Party has had this idea that compassion is kind of a zero-sum game, where mm. somehow if we are talking about the need, the fact that we have a mental health crisis among young men in this country right now, we're talking about the real needs that young men face that somehow it's to the detriment of other people obviously mainly women and i just don't think that way i think that we can care about everybody and i think for too long for too long see what i mean like that's kind of hard to disagree with there's been a stigma there's been a stigma around talking about helping you know those people because obviously for thousands of years it talking about men was to the exclusion of women and i understand the fear around that but we have to end this taboo or, or else it's going to mean a, it's going to be detrimental to the future of the democratic party because we have to have you know both men and women it, it really is i've got to say one other thing too I, I i had i told one of my one of my uh, kids i've got four kids and one of my kids kind of progressive uh, I, I i i said when when uh, they went off to school i said don't make sure you don't push the young men into the corner. You go into a pretty liberal place. I also said this to, to the head of school there. I said, here's the deal. You tell young men that they are suspects because they are young men, because of the sins of men over thousands, like this collective guilt, you push them into the corner, they will come out Trump supporters. Yeah. And I will tell you, I, I have one, one Democrat after another Democrat that's never voted for a Republican before, unlike me, that have said their boys, again, this was back 2016, 17, 18, 19, they would send their seven-year-old boys to school. Their seven-year-old boys would come back with these horror stories about teachers having the boys stand up, the teachers pushing those boys basically into the corner. Collective guilt for thousands of years of way that, that, that men fucked yeah, up. Racially, too. It and guess, yeah, and, and what happens when you push somebody into the corner? Andrew Sullivan wrote, wrote about this. Or you push a conservative into the uh, a, a corner, or you push, push a boy into the corner, they come out more radicalized. They come out, in this case, supporting Donald Trump. And that's happened. To young men. And I think, it, I think it's people are trying to clap on that because that's true. There's a there's a layer of truth to this. And that's once more why I think Trump and all of this is kind of the solution to this because this whole left side has been this forcing of cult not cultures, but like personal beliefs to the point where it's not you're not allowing people to have true personal sovereignty of their own lives. And the gov and these government these politicians, these bureaucrats are trying to encroach in our day-to-day -day lives that it's gross and they're it, they're trying to make dudes young guys my generation feel bad feel victim or make us feel like the victims of the stuff that has happened prior to us that we one weren't even born in and, and two even if we were born we weren't at the age where we had any influence we're just kids trying to 
figure out our own bodies and figure out our own lives and what is the purpose of our existence you know what i mean like that's what we're all struggling with not not to be pushed the world on us saying that we're we're at fault we're the ones to blame for all of this insane good balance because we need to acknowledge that although young men like myself and others we don't we are not responsible for the creation of that environment in the first place we also need to understand the history of that and of recognize that we have a responsibility you think, as men right. do you think social i don't agree with the responsibility you can acknowledge it you can understand the past you could do your due diligence right but that doesn't mean you have any responsibility to other than yourself to be better right like you don't owe society you don't owe somebody you don't know anything because of you know any type of history nah you you owe it to yourself to be the best person that you can be and then by by proxy of that you become a benefit of society That's media it. plays a part just a That's reinforcement right. of memes sure. over and over eight hours a I, day i think social media plays a part of it i think the commodification of hatred on social media in particular exactly. especially everything's COVID. a meme yeah, everything's especially, a meme That's especially since covid right we know for a fact since the passage of, of title nine for example that young men used to get bachelor's degrees at a rate 15 percent higher than women now that rate has flipped where women are getting 15 bachelor's degrees at a rate 15 percent right. higher than men that's not necessarily a bad thing it just means that our education system needs to you know we need to look at the structuring of it and realize that for young boys in particular they're actually developmentally behind women a lot of the time is anybody who's had they kids, need affirmative action scott galloway yeah. is so good on this issue and, and you're right there needs to be compassion there needs to be an understanding of 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 what has happened uh, over the past thousand or two thousand years or whatever yeah you have to have compassion but at the same time you you don't assign collective guilt right on to young men to young boys and if you yeah. do there are consequences and we need to understand too that the enemy is not masculinity itself right it's an unhealthy version commodifying masculinity where they basically mm -hmm. take what the internet's have the role that the internet plays here a lot of the time is it feeds on young men's insecurities yep. and right. sells them the solution to that insecurity whether that's a gun whether that's something else that helps to perpetuate that insecurity more and says here's your answer purchase a this product gun that's where we go with on that <laughs> i thought we were gonna go with like andrew tate's fucking alpha club or the all these other bullshit like ponzi schemes i that's definitely uh <laughs> commoditizing on the insecurities of dudes <sighs> guns oh brother i was i was with you for about four minutes and 17 seconds up until you said about that and it's so right. sinister because it actually makes those men weaker by doing that. What we need to do is realize yes by subscribing to hustlers university it indeed makes you more of a beta and less of an alpha i agree we, okay. we, need, a healthy version. we need a healthy version of what masculinity really right. looks like right it looks like this <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, Bill Maher. Okay, yeah, yeah, like Mark Cuban. No, we are. This is what's so frustrating. This is what I get so frustrated with, where is we already have great representation of what real men look like. And I won't talk Joe Rogan because I know instantly people are gonna like, oh, you gotta think of Joe Rogan. I won't look up Jocko Wilnick. Look up David fucking Goggins. Look up Cameron Haynes. Look up uh, Tim Kennedy. Look up. Who's another? Who's a? Who's another good guy? Who's another? There, there's just so many. Uh, I mean, you want you want somebody in Hollywood who I think is a great representation of being a strong man who's also a nerd is Superman, Henry Cavill, Henry Cavill, whatever you want to call him. That's a fantastic representation of what a real man is. You want another one? Jamie Fox. Jamie Fox is a great representation of what a man is. Rest in peace, Chadwick Boseman fantastic representation of what a man could be right we already have great representation of what masculinity is in society and we're not highlighting that we don't need to see anything new we already have it we just need to put the spotlight on them and take the spotlight away from rachel maddow i mean mark cuban if, if i can quote scott galloway uh, one more time and i think I, I heard him say this on your show for, for my parents, the definition of masculinity was you worked hard, you played by the rules, and you took care of other people. You took care of people around you. You took care of your children. 
You took care of your loved ones. You took care and, of people. And you didn't complain and, and didn't whine. Yeah, about right? everything. And yeah. always be talking about how everything is so unfair and you got a bad deal. Yeah. That's so unmasculine. Right. Suck it up. <laughs> um, Suck it up. Yeah. Suck your terrible life that yeah, he's had. You know. Now, uh, we could go in on like the suck it up, like the, it's a, I think when I when I hear that, I think that's a little uh, insincere at times. But a lot of people do kind of bitch and complain about their lives and don't take action and at least try to take life on by the by the horns. And if I could just share one thing with you guys, this is kind of like my working formula for success or something that I've been thinking about for. I don't know, I feel like about a year now, but I think the definition of success, and you can apply this to any aspect in your life, is intensity times discipline times consistency. And then you have to subtract your own self-doubt and your own uh, insecurities, is those are gonna things that we all have and they're all variables to the individual. But if you apply intensity, consistency, and discipline into your life in every aspect, you will be successful in that. And that's what I'm trying to do with this YouTube channel. So with that said, please like the video, subscribe, smash the subscribe button. In fact, hit that share button, share this with all your friends. If you if you like the way the words are kind of falling out my mouth hole, if you're picking up what I'm putting down. And with that said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.